Assalamu alaikum shukri doshok and very good evening to our viewers. It is our, as Azam is speaking in our uh, uh, weekly talk show, Politics and Beyond. Apna jara puthi no ta program dekhe ta kena tarre onik dhunno baad aur jara no tun ta dher jonda bolte si ashali program ta amra mulo to politics, policy, politician and obviously people ne kotha bolte ta ki aur seta ke lokhore ki amra local ebang national kisu politician the niyeshi jara ta dher obigo obimodden aishe shate. Uh, uh, issue and uh, society, local and national issue, and we have a question about the live question. 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 First, I would like to introduce uh, my left hand side. He is Mr. Uh, uh, Wesley Strettings, sorry if I'm not wrong, is right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, he is councillor and a deputy leader in London Borough of uh, Redbridge, and definitely he is running for MP and he is trying to uh, just unseat one of the popular MPs there, Mr. Lee Scott. So yeah, that's right. Thank you very much to come here. Yeah. How are you today? Yeah, very good, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, thank you. Shubhya uh, Doshak, we need to remind you today, maybe we'll have program today, is English and Bengali mix. Obviously, our guest, uh, he is not uh, uh, perfect on Bengali. No, I think you're learning not, not perfect, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> and uh, immediate right, uh, if I would like, is our a uh, rising leader in Tower Hamlets, <laughs> and uh, well, he is a very vocal leader. Uh, he was actually in <laughs> in London Metropolitan University. He was the president, I believe, a student yeah. union. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, sure. Where is this national president? Okay. Time. <laughs> so, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you. For Thank you very much to come. Oh, well, take one more thing. He was he is actually well. He was actually uh, uh, a researcher in. Tower oh, Hamlet yeah, as well from Conservative Party. Yeah, so you've gone from left to right and right to left. That's fine. We'll find out <laughs> next time. And well, my, my further right, I'm sure I don't need to introduce gentleman. He is very well known in our community. He is prof by profession, he is lawyer, lawyer and journalist. Journalist. She community Shadin Balbasan. And thank you very much, Tarek Bhai, uh, Tarek you. Choudhury, uh, to come here. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you for inviting oh, me for the, to it's your pleasure home. to get you here. Thank you. Um, Shupriya Doshak, Apna Janan, Amra, every week, so what we do, we draw a quiz. Uh, last week, it's a quiz that uh, if I would like to, if I request actually Wes, uh, yeah. as you were our guest today, <coughs> as is a safe guest, I, I think. Obviously, everybody is supporting course, you. Yes. And um, if you declare our winner, actually, last week quiz, uh, okay. one of these, you can just hear. And uh, Doshak, last week quiz was when did Greece declared independence from the Ottoman Empire. That is the answer, 1st of January, 1822. And definitely we'll learn now who is the, the winner. winner. Is Ariana from Wales. Oh, wow, thank you very much. Thank you, Ariana, for your contribution. And uh, you have given your uh, valuable opinion. Definitely it will uh, help us to do something better in future. And thank you very much. You all the way from Wales. Thanks a lot. Now. This week quiz, obviously, is, uh, we'll have one quiz, and deliberately I kept it uh, in Ilford area. He is our uh, Ilford North candidate. Uh, in 1860, what was found in Ilford High Road? Human skull, ancient pottery, and full-scale mammoth. After all, the answer is the answer. TV is just going to be email address. PNB at channel I Europe TV. So thank you very much. Now we would like to go our main program. It's a political opinion. I would like to start with Tarek Bai as a resident guest. Do you have anything, any political news, even incident, accident, or whatever, anything that bring you attention last two, three weeks or anything? You can share with our viewer, please. I think every day there is a political attention because it's every day era, political yeah. parties are declaring their attention. Uh, you know, very many uh, issues, policies about apprenticeship policies about housing or oh, politically about the you have you know that uh, there's a HSBC scandal and so many issues so every day I'm getting at attention and especially if you look Bengali uh, dominated yeah. area okay. you know Tower Hamlet's mayor case is in, in, in trial and we have seen many ev almost every day someone is giving a witness uh, in the tri tri tribunal we have heard about that this presiding officer has been discharged from this uh, uh, from this chart, so, so who is it, going to say? Well, which one you like? 
Which one you understand? If you want to say the Tower Hamlet, you said if you'll no, no. let's, let's share it with people. Uh, for such, Tower Hamlet is the only vara, is important for the Bangladeshi community people. But nationally, national election is in around 80 days or 82 days, something. So it is days, very yeah. important which party is giving what uh, what offering. So it's not yet any any party given any political manifesto yet, but ev almost every day. There yes. is a decision or policy announcement from the various parties. Say, for example, Labour Party is doing, Tory Party also sometimes some of the issues they're giving or even sometimes they sort of refuting whatever Labour is saying. So I think policy issues, uh, where is the best person he can tell about his party, Labour Party, and if anybody can defend or even say about um, Labour. I'm here complete as journalist, so I won't go f in favor of any political party. No, no, it's fine. No, it's always, you will have your uh, opinion as, as, as a journalist. I have a personal the... opinion and I was involved in the pol party politics, but today I'm not here to give any anything purely for the party basis. As a resident, my yeah. Thing, um, mm. My personal opinion that as the election is just coming and just we need to follow which party is offering the best for us. Which party As everyone is offering lots of uh, so many promising things. We and need to see the last five years or last terms what Tory party has given. We need to compare and people should come forward and give their best opinion comparing the policies about Tory, party, Tory party's policies and also some of the issues, uh, NHS is the main issues and I'm also following what Tory party can offer, what uh, Labour party is offering, NHS is a big debate about NHS. In terms yeah, of it is very important uh, in and, our and job uh, so, the Asian social community, system. We also look at two other issues. Uh, uh, one is um, terrorism bill. What uh, Asian and Muslim, me myself, from uh, Asian and Bangladeshi community, we also worried about what uh, the terrorism impact bill is, uh, impact on terrorism bill uh, to the Asian community, Muslim community, mostly Muslim uh, peace loving community and. In the mainstream media, a Muslim being, uh, you know, exposed as a, as a, as as a, a terrorist a, uh, or something, uh, we believe something, but very slim minority, minority of the uh, Muslim are. community doing something that uh, taking our name, but that doing in the name of Muslim. So I am also looking at um, what the Tory party and Labour party is offering. Uh, for the Muslim community as a whole, and who can favor, uh, who in, in support of integration in the mainstream community. We don't want, as a Bengali community, we don't want to be uh, live in a, in a small area or a sort of exclusion now. Yeah, we, we want, want to, to live together, integrate, and uh, so live with, uh, this with is the, These and are all the issues. Is any specific issue that maybe we, we can discuss? Okay, that's great. Thank you, Tarek. Well, you brought okay. uh, lots of, uh, of policies and, and, and points and issues uh, that we can discuss. I'm sure uh, both of them are very expert on that. They can talk lots. Uh, if I come to you, Shir. Well, my opinion about Because the uh, Tarek, well, he was telling quite lots of things. So is there anything that you can talk that... I think the, the immigration will play a very important role for the next elections because um, the policy for the, uh, for the Tory party last year uh, wasn't really, really good for many migrants in this country. But why, why it was not good for the migrant community? Because uh, I think the policy is too harsh for, 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 for many immigrant in what, communities. In what respect? Because they, uh, I mean, the, no, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the migra mi Migration Watch report, yeah. you see the net migrant has never been actually reduced. It is because lots of people coming from the EU. But the concern for the British people is not about controlling non-EU migrant, control overall migrant. And I think, yeah. I think our government has failed to do that. But the, what they did is they cut the net migrant from the ethnic minority and commonwealth citizen, which was unfair. Yeah. Look at the students, international students, number of them has been cut. Look at the, look at the uh, policy that they actually actually made and that is not really conducive. Yes, sir, if you don't mind, I got a caller. I will come back to you definitely. Okay. It's a very interesting issue for especially our community. They, they would love to look to say. Assalamu alaikum caller. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello. I, th I, th I think we, we lost the line. Okay, okay sir, please carry on. So what I was saying is that um, the British people are not concerned about the, um, uh, uh, the reduction of migrants from, from on, on one particular group. They're concerned about the reduction of overall migrant. But the government has actually failed to do that. They have actually lo um, you know, launched an attack on the ethnic minority. One and thing citizens, you mentioned, a very is interesting thing, is there are two types of immigrants. And in is, uh, here is EU and non-EU. Non -EU, yeah. Which one are you talking about? 
I'm talking about both overall migrants. It's overall, like a general, of, yeah. general. Uh, what government picture. did? The government just keep the you know border open for EU, and this attack was the known EU. Which but is as you know, border you cannot close. This is a treaty. That treaty is done. People, people maybe, asked to control overall time. migrant. They didn't ask to control one aspect of it. At the you same understand? time, that they, the ask, they because of they can, cannot control the EU migrant. They're now putting on you know try to vacate. A space for create a space for more EU while actually putting all the non EU migrants, you know, with but is, is a big question look again. At the, look at the again uh, when uh, uh, you see Prime Minister is going, the Chancellor is going, uh, uh, going to Asia, say in India, China, they are, are just uh, advocating for uh, good migrants, say so they're asking for. I mean, positive migration. But whose fault is and this? Sure I mean, you, you let the international students come here to study. And when they come here, they find a different picture, you know. And that is really, really detrimental for many students. For example, I'll give an example. Some students who came from Asian countries, they paid a good amount of money. They're not coming from a wealthy family. Not everyone's coming from a wealthy yeah. background. They came here, they invested all their savings from their parents. They came to a private college. And then they saw that the college ain't actually lost their license. Now the student cannot go to university. They cannot go anywhere. Home office giving them a cartel mail letter. If you don't leave this country within 20 days, so who, find other universities. So who is responsible for this situation? Do you think? Government, obviously government. So who is government, government has to regulate because to make these, sure. you mentioned there are two types of uh, institution here. One is the student group, another is yeah. uh, private college. There is a, another is public university. So this this college it didn't grow within two, three years. This, this culture is going on last 10, 15 years, I, mean, I think. But the thing is that so the is, it, is it a failure of current government or is it a failure of both governments, say Labour government, they, did, they didn't uh, look at properly, or, or, or Tory government, they are failing to uh, solve the issue, issues or uh, bring I think it, it, proper the responsibility goes on both, but for, mainly for the Tory government. When they wanted to fix the migrant, they actually attack a student rather than try to come up with, reg regulate the whole colleges and really settle something. But they just attack, get them out, get them so out. So why do you think As if they were wiping came? out the labor, labor voters. I'm sorry? Why do you think a student issue came to or prominent or too vocal to the government? Because they fail and uh, control the migrant. I mean, is people, that, are, is people are concerned about the illegal migrant in this country who coming yep. through the lorry and other, other, other ways. They are not concerned about the students coming into this country because the, the students are bona fide migrants. They put, uh, you know, they the inject money to the economy. They actually, uh, actually diversified Britain with many things uh, yes, which indeed, benefited yeah. this country. Government, well, government but the government actually again. failed to regulate those bogus colleges. They failed to actually create some sort of mechanism for, for a real student to come to this country. But instead of doing these things, they actually close colleges uh, who obviously have, you know, should have been uh, regulated and closed before, before the student came here. Oh. Many students are living in limbo, limbo and they have, they, there is no one, no one hearing about any, anything about the students, oh, no right, one yeah, hearing sure. their views. I will come, sorry to interrupt you. Again, I got a call. Aslam alaikum, caller. Walaikum uh, aslam. I'm Chaudhuri Hafizur Rahman. Yes, please. What is your question, brother? Uh, I got an opinion and question. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for having a brilliant uh, program in the Bengali channel. Thank you very much. And my salam to all your guests. Thanks. Especially Wade Streeting and also Tarek Chaudhary and you as well and other guests. Thank you very uh, much. My opinion is that the uh, current government, the Tory government actually uh, made a uh, you know, uh, blunder actually in immigration policy, as one of your guests already mentioned, that the way they handle the immigration and nationality issues, they are making uh, Britain as a unwelcoming country, but that is not the case. They, uh, the international students are uh, around the world, they are coming to Britain, they actually bring more than seven billion dollars uh, or pounds, uh, but in instead of uh, that investment issues, the government failed to actually engage. What they are doing, they are making policies. If you have a look last few uh, months ago, even in the cabinet, they had disagreements regarding the new policies. Yeah. And recently, uh, Home Secretary Theresa May, uh, I think day before yesterday, they announced that they are going to uh, change new laws, especially uh, categorizing the visa, visa, visa and other things. And that sounds that they are actually, they are puzzled and confused. This story government is actually uh, destroying the investment area as well as the future leaders. Once the international students, they complete their education in this country, mm -hmm. 
they actually becoming one of the you know, brightest investment because education leaders, once they complete the education in Britain, they will be the leaders to lead the world ahead. And if we do not attract them to stay in this country, obviously not everyone who wants to stay in this country and there is a brighter scope for them, they should be allowed. And I guess the Labour government is coming to power, they will be, you know, reshuffle and uh, uh, review these policies and they will attract these international students and the uh, investment situation and the environment will be developed. And I, I request to ways to uh, just put a light on it. Definitely. And also, I got a question to ways that the Tory government's policy on the bedroom tax. Mm. This is actually uh, like government department entering into private property. This will be a, a, actually a trespass. The way they are handling this matter, everyone is scared in this country now. I believe that the government need to go and go go ahead actually. That's fine. That's that's that, that's fine. Thank you very much for your question, brother. I, I'll definitely I will put this question to Wes. Uh, I'm sure he will give you uh, uh, he will give you an answer. Uh, before going that Wes, uh, I got one more call. Mm -hmm. I will yes. I'll come back to you. Please. Hello, Assalamualaikum, caller. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Ami Amar Ukusta for the Sara. Please. Postnota will the Bortoman. Amar say, Amar Panel Kasarakan. Ami Ashane, I'll better have a You can throw the question to the panel. I will pass them. That's fine. Please. Go on. Panel of Sarakam Sara. Please. The the do I so in Ukustona Tyson there, Otiti, Tangas Postara from Saram, the Agami. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. More or less same question, uh, both of gentlemen. And Wes, uh, it's, it's very interesting uh, actually mm. to know all of these uh, viewer questions because I, th I think they found sort of relationship with you because you were involved in any ways, um, yeah, that's right. isn't it? Mm. You were the leader, <coughs> you were the chairman. So. People mm. are expecting quite lots of uh, uh, answer from you. Mm. There are two questions actually. Uh, both of them actually student related as immigration. Mm -hmm. mm. What he was, uh, both of them were telling this government is failing to uh, deal this student issue as uh, Yashir was mentioning more or less. So, what is your opinion? I'm sure you you learned the question. And I mean, I think the government's failed on two fronts really. Firstly, on on immigration, they've, um, as Yashir said, they've broken their own promises. And I think whether you think the net migration cap was the right thing or the wrong thing, and I personally thought all along that they wouldn't be able to deliver it, I think they're, they're guilty of talking tough on immigration, but not actually being able to deliver on the policy so and the expectations. So they failed. But, but more, more fundamentally, I mean, Yashir's absolutely right. International students are so important for this country. We have a global reach in our universities, which is important because it enriches campus life by enabling people from all mm -hmm. backgrounds to come together. We have ongoing trade and diplomatic links. I mean, people who are now leading governments, commerce, industry right across the world who are educated here in Britain. So it's really important that we, we don't send a message, and I'm afraid this is what the government's done, of saying, we're not interested. Britain's, Britain's closed for business. We should be open for business. We should be welcoming international students over. And I think, uh, worryingly, I think we've, we've sent a message to lots of countries one, that they're not welcome, and that's one, not the right One thing, thing I'm sure was you, you dealt with uh, lots of uh, student issues. You were the movement mm -hmm. of that. So, <coughs> The first question uh, the gentleman was telling, uh, there is there is two types of student that's the, mm. he mentioned. Mm. There is positive or some are negative. As you know, there is one case, there are uh, around 30 to 30 plus thousand uh, people. They were in uh, Twike, Twike, isn't it? Twike, Twike, Twike yeah. There was sort of a scandal. Mm. Uh, well, there is, again, uh, who will take this responsibility? Some people say government has failed to maintain the quality all of these things at the same time an institute they are not taking responsibility the end sufferer is a student as you said government is closing but government is ag again they are encouraging to bring a student as you know mm, when prime mm. minister going outside of the country as china india on the major uh, business trip they go and they say come down to the university of uk and british education is a world famous education without doubt but Again, as you mentioned, um, net migration. Do you think government actually 
failed to do... Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, it was never going to be workable because, you know, you've got the European Union where there's free movement of people. And I think, um, although that has some challenges, by and large, it's a good thing for the country because we can trade more openly. We've got free movement of people across the European Union. It's, a, it's the biggest, world's biggest market of its kind. How do so you balance this one? Again, it's, there is immigration issue. When government is giving a little bit tight, they said, mm. oh, they're kicking out, they're closing the door. On the same time, in the local, you know, local arena, when mm. government is doing a little bit relaxed, then it's problem. As you know, if you see the Labour Party immigration uh, immigration policy, I just uh, printed in the morning actually the here uh, what I can see here. What uh, is exactly here? Labour got things wrong on immigration in the past, but Mr. Miliband has set out a new approach, controlling immigration and controlling its impact on local communities. Britain needs immigration rules that are tough and fair. Yeah, I think that's so, right, and I think it's the, the fairness that's been missing. So, for example, one of the big issues that's raised with me on the doorstep is um, Eastern European labour coming over and undercutting local people with jobs. And the, 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 the thoughtful response to that is to say, well, firstly, let's increase the minimum wage and have a living wage, because that would actually prevent the incentive for employers to undercut and bring people over from other parts of Europe. Um, but we have here minimum, uh, minimum wages. We have a minimum wage. It isn't high enough. And actually, one of the things that I think is just appalling in a, in a country like ours in the 21st century is that people, even people on the minimum wage, which I'm proud Labour brought in, but people on the minimum wage, it, it's not a living wage. People can't afford to live on the minimum wage and pay their bills and pay their heating and keep a roof over their head and feed their families. So I think where we've been getting this badly wrong, particularly in the last five years under austerity of this government, is complete unfairness in the way that decisions are made and the impact they're having on people, which is why I'm not surprised the bedroom tax has been raised All as right. well. All right, again, I, I, uh, I think, Wes, thank you very much. You have given your opinion. Now, we've got a second question is bedroom tax, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. I think we don't have sufficient time in this segment. <coughs> we'll discuss in the next segment, so we'll have a, a, a broad discussion with them. Thank you, viewer. After uh, Amadu Shangi Thakken, we will come back after a very short break. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> We are back after just a little break. Our program is going to be a little bit more. In 1860, what was found in Ilford High Road? Is it human skull, ancient pottery, or full scale mammoth? After our answer, we will be able to PNB at channel I Europe. TV. Our A segment, this, this segment, uh, we will talk about. Manifesto actually, political manifesto after Janin is election just nearby. No one declared their uh, party manifesto, but we will have little idea. Obviously, politicians are here, they will give you an idea. So, this uh, topic actually, we will talk about manifesto. Was what matters most to people actually? Uh, as we know, election is coming, all politicians are running and here and there, they are asking to people with hundreds of promises and lots of things. So. They are trying to convince for another five years. It could be Tory, it could be Labour. So it's our time. We need to understand who is going to work for us, who will deliver, actually. But sometimes they fail to understand what people are thinking, what ordinary people are expecting. But we know, actually, what people means. As you know, job, education, housing, NHS, immigration, taxes and economy, Europe, law and order benefit, poverty, welfare, all of these things. But politicians sometimes they fail to understand. Maybe we will have a little chat. Today this Alpha Shomar Purishore, we will try our best to explain and they will do their best. So if I come to first actually this segment with Wes. Um, your party said, today I have seen actually your uh, website. Mm -hmm. What is the heading nice thing? We will build a Britain that rewards hard work, not just privilege and ensure the next generation does better than the last. What does it mean and how do you justify your party record last 
during the last government time? Well, I mean, I think one of the worst things about Britain today is that for the first time, probably in, in modern British political history, we've got children being born in Britain today whose life chances and prospects look worse than their parents. And it has always been the case in Britain that you expect, and you know, it's like every parental instinct, you want your children to do better than you, you invest in their education, you support them, you hope they'll go on to even greater success in a whole range of industries. And, and the government's own Child uh, Poverty and Social Mobility Commission has warned that we're in danger of, of reaching a tipping point on child poverty where it's going to be impossible to reverse the, the trend. So I think if you want to judge the government by one thing alone, it's the fact that there will be more children living in absolute poverty by this general election than there were when David Cameron came to office. And I think Labour's got a good record of standing up for people who are from disadvantaged backgrounds, of tackling child poverty and inequality, something I feel very strongly about. I come from a working class family. I was born in Tower Hamlets. And you know, not many people from my sort of background who've had the chances that I've had in life. And that was all down to good support from my family, good support from my teachers, the opportunity to go to a great university and all the chance and opportunities that I've had, I want other people to have. That's fantastic. But the problem is, as you mentioned, that the previous generation, they enjoyed laws, but the current generation, they're struggling, mm. as you know that. Mm. And that's, do you believe this, this is the result of the current government or is the result of concurrent, say, uh, Labour government was 10 plus years in, in the power? So it's all about economy. Do you think it's strong economy and do you think government fail to ensure future generations have life and very simple thing, education. Well, in, in, some respects, I was, uh, in some respects, I was a child of, of the late, last Labour government. I remember being in secondary school when Labour came to power. Things like the building school totally transformed my school and turned around the books and facilities that are there. It's now unrecognisable compared to what it was before. And, you know, today, I think we've got... If the, you know, the, the child poverty thing, I think you should keep on coming back to it because we had really ambitious uh, targets for tackling and eliminating child poverty by the end of the decade. It's going to be impossible to meet that target now. And I think, yes, times are tough, but you've got to judge a society on how it treats its most vulnerable people. And this government has given tax cuts for the wealthiest and cut public services for the rest of us. And I think that, that says everything that you need to know about the modern Conservative Party. They haven't changed. They have always stood up for the wrong people throughout their history. And Labour's on the side of the many, not the few. That's the difference. As you mentioned, the child poverty is very, very, uh, well, very important issue, even in, in Tower Hamlet. Absolutely, we are yeah. here. Isn't it one of the uh, worst boroughs in, in, in London with the child poverty? And mm. not only Tower Hamlet, even neighbouring Newham. Um, Hackney, I'm sure, is uh, red busy better than us, I think. It's yeah, but we've still got significant yeah. pockets of child poverty. Yes, there's so an issue for us as again, well. Again, these, so what, what is your party offering? Obviously, these issues it didn't build up one day. As I mentioned very earlier, economy is all about. Absolutely. When you will have a strong economy, you will have a strong defense, strong uh, social system, all of these things. But time is not how it was 10 years ago. Mm. Well, I think, to be honest, at this election, the, the, the differences between the Labour and the Conservative Party on tax and spending is probably wider than it's ever been. We've said we'll eliminate the deficit as soon as we can and over the course of the Parliament, but we'll make fairer choices. So, for example, we'll reintroduce the 50% tax rate, so higher earners be asked to pay more. We'll introduce a mansion tax on homes worth over £2 million to pay for the NHS. And we'll actually reintroduce the 10p rate, which would lift 24 million people um, out of, out of uh, taxes they're currently paying. So it's about, there are tough decisions to be made. And I can't sit here and say that there will be no difficult choices if Labour win. Of course there will. Better the but we're making more, dip, but, we're, but we'll be making fairer choices. And I think one of the problems of this government is that it's balanced the books off the backs of the poorest people. And we've seen that in the last few weeks with the way the government is, again, banging the drum on benefits. I know from my own casework that there are people who are really struggling. They can't find work. They're living in cramped temporary accommodation that's unsuitable for them. These aren't people who don't want to do well. These are people who are suffering in poverty. Some of these people are both in work and in poverty because they receive poverty pay. So I think we've got to really get a grip, not just on the economy, but also on the inequality of our economy as well. And that's, that's the difference between Labour and the Conservatives. And actually, we said, it's interesting looking at the government's record, we said at the last general election that we would halve the deficit over the course of this parliament. And the Tories said, no, no, that's not, that's not fast enough. We'll eliminate the deficit. And they've even broken their own promises on deficit reduction 
and tackling the but debt. The, but they made a plan actually, as uh, George Osborne, I think, uh, uh, during autonomous statement, after autonomous statement, he said uh, we'll make a, a budget surplus in 20 by 20, 1920. So they got a plan, and they said they are very open. We'll yeah, but they've also the got loads of uncosted. So the Tories also said they're going to cut taxes left, right, and centre. Yeah. But they haven't said how they're going to pay for it. So I think based on their records, if I were someone on, you know, not just the lowest incomes, but just ordinary incomes, I'd be really worried about what a Conservative government will bring in terms of, you know, service cuts as well as tax cuts, because th their record is cutting taxes for the richest and slashing services okay. for everyone else. And, you know, you just look at the local NHS, particularly in Redbridge, we've lost I'll, our maternity. I'll, I'll come with, I'll come a, with the know, I'll come, I'll come with the so, okay. Yes, uh, if I go to Yeshi, uh, as um, Wes was uh, 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 describing all of these uh, uh, benefits and, and child poverty issues, so how do you uh, defend, say, your party and, and how they are well, dealing with that? I have no that? opinion on this because I'm not really good at this. I, I don't have any knowledge about it. But I think the you know, child poverty has always been there. I mean, I mean look at the, um, the Tower Hamlet borough. And the t child poverty has been very high here. When you know, the Tower Hamlet first took, took up the borough, and the mayor was elected, but still nothing has been done. The type of what is there. So I don't know what would be the plan, but conservative uh, main agenda was to cut the deficit and, um, and actually carry on with the economy. And I think they have done it quite well for that. Okay, that's fine. I will, I'll, I'll come to you, Tarek, by with this opinion. Yes. Salaam alaikum, Kola. Hi, Tarek. I just want to put a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Yeah, I just want to put a question to Vice President yeah. regarding the Palestinian issue. What? Sorry, what issues? Palestine. What is policy on Palestinian issue in the Middle East? All right, uh, that's fine. Uh, thank you very where much. Does it stand? What does it, where does it stand regarding, because obviously it's the large Muslim voters in Egypt law. Yes. So obviously he has to please everyone. But besides that, we'd just like to put a question. What is his position on the plight of the Palestinians for the last 70 years, which is created by Israel. All right, so, so we'd like to hear this from you, please. Thank you very much for this question. I will, I will put to yes. Okay, yes. I'll be yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, the gentleman yeah, who was asking, so what is your personal opinion? Yeah, well, th thanks for the question. I've had more emails on this issue in the last, well, last month or so than any other issue since I was selected as Ilford North's Labour candidate. I think there are really serious issues around Palestinian human rights, um, the way in which illegal settlements have been expanded without any consequence. Um, I believe very strongly in a two-state solution and an independent, viable state of Palestine existing alongside an independent state of Israel. You only get that by getting the, the parties around the table to negotiate. And I think partly because of the intransigence of different leaders on both sides throughout the last 70 years, um, we, we haven't got to a position where um, we can get a negotiated peace. I'm hoping that in the Israeli elections later this year that we get rid of Benjamin Netanyahu because I think in recent years he has been um, one of the biggest obstacles to peace and the way in which he has ignored the international community and just sailed ahead with, with illegal settlement expansion has been a real problem. It's one of the reasons why I think the Labour Party um, recently voted to support the Palestinian statehood bid at the United Nations. Now, 10 or 20 years ago, that wouldn't have happened because our view has always been that, you know, it's not about unilateral recognition through the UN. It's meaningless unless you get both parties around the table. I still think you need both parties around the table, otherwise the resolutions don't mean anything. But... I think it was about sending a signal to Israel that the way in which they've continued to expand settlements is just completely unacceptable and, and illegal. Um, and that's international law, by international law, it is yeah. illegal. Yeah. Well, again, again, as you mentioned, it's very interesting topic. As you said, you got hundreds of email uh, regarding this. Uh, as you said, government is changing. That's true. Last 70 years, this country has all government changing. Yeah, that's right. But people are sitting there, and at the end of the day, people are suffering. Yeah. And loads of peace accord, you know, the Camp David, is, uh, Oslo accord. Uh, it's, it's lots of happening, but there is nothing. Even the latest one, Mr. Kerry, he was trying to do uh, all of this peace negotiation yeah. last six months. I think he traveled more than 14 times in, in the Middle East during his mm. uh, uh, one year or one and a half year time. Uh, but still nothing is happening. Yeah. Why do you think, what is the government should play from the Britain? As you know, it was a part of the British colony once and, and just we left from there and still is nothing. Yeah, I think, I think we do have a sort of 
moral historic duty to to help bring about peace in the Middle East. I think it's it's, a, it's about two things. It's partly about politics, particularly international politics, and I think um, you know one of the sad things about the um, passing away recently of, of King Abdullah was that he had led the Arab Peace Initiative, which is probably the most serious effort that we've seen recently to get people around the table, and I hope that that initiative continues because the, the partnership of the neighbouring countries is going to be really important. It is indeed. Similarly, yeah. you know, once the Israeli elections are out of the way, I think we need the leaders on both sides, um, the West Bank, Gaza, and the Israeli government sitting around the negotiating table again but it's also about improving things on the ground for Palestinians now and I think one of the things that we can do is look a lot more not just at aid because you know it's all very well giving people aid actually what what the Palestinians need is the opportunity to build a viable state and that's about getting investment into the West Bank but also dealing with Gaza as well I mean Gaza the people of Gaza are currently living in conditions which are effectively an open-air prison <laughs> exactly. and I think that's yeah, fueling that's violence just, uh, and it's fueling there. some of the some of the harsh extremism and all absolutely and, and so you've got to deal with conditions on the ground so uh, until until reality and until life begins to change for ordinary Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza peace is going to seem so distant that people become desperate and I think it's really important that we're trying to change the conditions for people on the ground in the West Bank and Gaza now but also driving ahead with a proper peace process it's simply unacceptable that that political leaders on either side are yeah, able to say we're not going to talk it's just you know people are suffering every single day that's and it's not just people in, in the Palestinians who are suffering the Israelis when the air raid sirens go off and the yeah both sides end up with the people that suffer thank you very much for your valuable opinion I think as our viewer uh, uh, gentlemen you got your uh, clear answer um, if I go to Tarek Bay actually uh, sorry yes Hedy. you want to continue this thing no, with us no. yes Tarek Bay uh, uh, you mentioned as well NSS Obviously, we'll, we'll discuss as much as possible with, the, with okay. all of the topics as uh, party manifesto. Yeah. Do you think NHS buzzer says Labour said will inject 2.5 billion in their next next uh, uh, next term if elected? Next term yeah. elected. At the same time, Conservative said, "Well, we'll do 2 billion." So, my asking is this: Everybody can promise. Again, I said very uh, beginning of our program, promise you can make before election end of the day who will deliver and where this money will come from 2.5 billion someone offer from labor and the conservative they said 2 billion so where this money is coming from uh, thank you actually i don't know about where the money come one thing i can tell you that uh, Tory party is telling that yes they will input. In Why don't you uh, look back the record of last five years? What they're doing with NHS? What about the waiting time? What about the nurses? What about the breakdown of NHS? Many many NHS are breaking down, giving the private. Even they gave it to private. Sometimes they, they dismantle the NHS, then hire the um, highly expensive, uh, the, giving the contract that people they know. So look at uh, what they have done last five years. And in terms of next, uh, the Labour Party has established uh, the NHS after uh, in in, 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 four, in in 40s. So uh, so Labour Party has done it. Maybe it go in, in favour of Labour Party. But what I can see uh, in an open <laughs> naked eye that yes, <laughs> the Labour Party has done a lot, and that for me that I think Labour Party can be believe um, is believable that they, they can do NHS. How many nurses they look but at the look at the waiting time, and then uh, how much time very, to very, wait? Yeah, the very good good thing I was asked, trying to ask yeah. you. They were power more than 10 years. Yes. Why they failed to reduce the waiting time? And the story government for five years, say, yes. they were power a pretty long time as well, uh, yes. uh, labor. They failed to even the cancer. What they promises, I can see in the, uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was looking their uh, NHS policies. What yes. they said, they will reduce this. Uh, cancer test and result time as well by seven days. Any specific so issues, I, I think I don't think it deal with any specific issues. But what I can see, like the last five years, if you look at mm. it, not one of the many NHS trusts has been broken down. Many judicial review has to, uh, you know, bring forward to the court. And after judicial review, court has ordered many issues. I believe, you know, Waltham Store and some other issues, the breakdown and then giving to privatizations and so many issues that affect people. You look at the waiting time, look at the, uh, and, and other issues about, say, for example, in many 
King George there's a problem, uh, Croydon there's a problem. You, I cannot recall the very NHS, many NHS staff are facing problem because of the mismanagement, with that dismantling NHS. So I think um, on the track record in last five years, labor, um, labor um, last five years, is Tory is not doing well with NHS. I don't what know are what, doing what, well? what are they doing well? Yeah. Tory, what one can think you can you can tell what I said. They're trying to recover, but still Labour Party is telling that look, the recovery is slow in last one century. The recovery, they, they but, the recovery. Problem is, but they're trying to recover. Uh, the the sometimes you forget to talk about economy. Economy mm -hmm. is the backbone of everything. If you don't have money in your pocket, you I don't can, know. The can, 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 I can answer you. Uh, I think. I think. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I'm uh, uh, started by. What is the? I know is NHS is going to be <laughs> big yeah, issues. Lots of things. How they're going to do? Different party, different policy. My simple question is, how they will fund this 2.5 billion pound? Yes. But that is not clear to the people. If you so can make it simple, yeah, we've been really, how will really clear it? about this. Yeah, we please. said we'll fund it through a mansion, mansion tax on properties worth over two million pounds a year, and also clamp down on tax, aggressive tax avoidance. How much are you getting? Yes, was, uh, and I, I, that will cover the extra 2.5 billion pounds. I'm, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Why I'm asking? Because is it this amount? Is it the right amount of money? Is it the sufficient amount of money to cover your uh, uh, all of the uh, social expenditure? What you promises from your leader? Say it's NHS, you said the child poverty and all of these things, so unemployment. Do you think this is the M sufficient amount of money just for a couple of sectors well, you can the, the, the mansion and tax and, and the clamp down on the tobacco companies, that's two and a half billion. That's going directly into the NHS. Our other spending yeah. commitments, so where all, of them, all of them in the manifesto are going to be fully costed. There are going to be no uncosted spending but commitments. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier about fairer taxes. We are going to ask people who are on the highest incomes to pay more than they do now. Yes. I think that's the right thing to do, given how tough people but are one finding thing it in is the current climate. What they are telling, they are telling we will we'll reduce tax. Say, but what, they said, what they said, yeah. if you earn £12,500, you don't need to pay any tax. On the contrary, what you are doing, your party, your uh, minimum uh, uh, wage is going to go, I think, six, six to eight pounds. Yeah, up to eight pounds. Yeah. So, where is the balance? When you're paying twelve pounds, you will raise the tax. That means you are giving one way money, another way taking back. But Tory, what they said, we will give you opportunity. You don't need to pay any tax. Yeah, but if we've also said we'll euros, introduce we'll so also introduce new my, 10p starting rate of tax as yeah, well. Yeah, my question is, what is the major difference people? between these two policies? It's sort of a massive difference. I can, I, it's, I, about, it's about whose side you're on. And the Tories are attacking Labour for being, you know, anti-business and, and anti-wealth and anti-aspiration just because we are daring to suggest that people who are either avoiding tax um, or aren't paying their fair share of tax should pay a bit more. Given what's going on in the economy and given how people, even people on decent incomes, particularly in London where, you know, prices are rocketing, wages aren't, even people on pretty decent incomes are struggling to get by. And I think it's right to say to those people who do earn more, we are going to ask you to pay a bit more because we've got to protect public services and look after people on low and middle incomes. I think that is a fair thing to do. Yeah. And that will, and, but all of our policies, and you know, Eppels isn't very popular with some people in the Labour Party at the moment because he turns around and says, I know you want money for this, that and the other, but you can't have it because we've got tough decisions. So we are taking tough decisions on spending, but, but we're also making fairer decisions around where we're taxing and where we're yeah, spending. Yeah, well, the problem is people sometimes fail to understand because you were telling, we'll do this, we'll mm. do this, but where this money is coming from? As just you mentioned, you are not, your party is not so business friendly. Why do you think your business and business think, leaders I, are doing? See, I, I disagree business with leaders are, business leaders are We're not anti-business, anti we're just anti-business as usual. And actually, if you look at our policy on small to medium-sized businesses, for example, there are about 5,000 of those in my constituency. Um, we said we will cut and then freeze business rates. Now, the, the single biggest thing that local businesses complain to me about is business rates. I say, how well, can I help? Cut my business rates, and that's exactly what the Labour government would what do. What is the current government doing? They're doing the same thing. But, we said, but we've committed to rates. cut the business rates further and then to freeze business rates. And I think that will make a massive difference to small and medium sized businesses. So I think we've got, uh, you know, we've got very good business policies, not least remaining in the European Union, which is the single biggest risk to British business and the British economy is the prospect of Britain leaving the European Union in 2017. That's fine. Because David Cameron's got a problem with Europe, our, with UKIP, he's yeah. threatening to pull us out. But that would be a disaster for us. I will ask you, you just uh, moved on to uh, the European Union. Mm. There is, a, there is a two party actually. Labour, well, peop, some people said the Labour they don't have any plan. Conservative, at least they said, well, we'll go for referendum. 
that's keep the opportunity to the British people. They will decide mm -hmm. what they want to do. Do you know how much we are paying European Union every day? Uh, got how much? How much do we pay every day yeah, to the European Union? Not off the top of my head. Millions every day cost that costing us. But we also well, get we also get millions of pounds worth yeah, of benefits as well. So what Labour said will will reform the European Union. Yeah. And that reform has never happened last 10, 15, 20 years. And that reform is going towards United States of Europe. On the contrary, conservatives are telling, well, we'll give you a referendum. That's mm. your choice. So people are a little bit camouflaged, actually. Well, people are not clear what level, actually, they are going towards. As you mentioned yeah. earlier, immigration. EU immigration is one of the, uh, with the, with the big issue right now than non-EU <coughs> immigrants. So how do you... Or clarify your no, see, I think our, our position on Europe is Europe. clearer than Tories. We've said, no, we're not going to do a referendum. Unless there is another treaty which involves a transfer of power, then there'll be a referendum. But otherwise, no. The way things are at the moment, we think a better use of our time and, and focus is on improving the economy and public services. And in terms of reforming Europe, I think there's this big myth that we've got this island called Britain and everyone here is unhappy with the way certain features of the European Union work. Actually, right across Europe, I think there are lots of people from the left and the right of the political spectrum who are concerned about the way the European Union works. If we treated countries like France and Germany and others as our partners and our allies, we would get more done. And I think it's astonishing. We've got a Conservative Prime Minister who's left himself isolated in Europe when m most of the rest of the European Union governments are run by Conservative Prime Ministers. He can't even get on with his own side. How is he going to influence them? So how do you, how do you give that answer? They are telling, no, we are creating momentum. We are creating a situation, we will have ability to deal with that. Well, I think, we'll David, I think, David, Cameron, I think David Cameron and every single one of his MPs and candidates should say now very clearly, are they in favour of staying in Europe in 2017 or in favour of leaving Europe? Because I've seen reports that say that the majority of Conservative MPs <laughs> want to leave Europe. Now, that is a huge, huge what? decision. Okay. And they've got to be honest yes. with the British we, we, people, we, we, in we or got, out. We've got a very short time. In or what out. is your personal opinion with the referendum? I think we've, want... we've got to stay in the European Union, and I would vote but yes no to stay into the European Union. But David Cameron, he didn't say, I want to get out of Prime Minister, uh, sorry, from European Union. But I think what that's what's said, happening I by stealth. I think that's what, what David Cameron, David, what unlike... What is your personal opinion? Do you... Do you believe it is right to give the British people choice that will you stay or not? Well, I've, I've never had a vote, so I would like one at some point. So but I don't think in 2017 we are creating massive instability when the recovery is still fragile. This is not the right time for a debate about membership of the European Union. And if we did come out, it would be a complete disaster. And I think David Cameron and all of his colleagues should say very clearly, would they vote yes to stay in Europe or no to leave Europe? Because the single biggest risk to our economy and British business is Britain leaving the European Union. All right. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Tarek Bay and, and, and Yashi. Shukriya Doshak, Apna Shulen, Amader Doshak, Der Kastegi, Ashale, just a glimpse of manifesto, obviously, manifesto they did and no one published. Apna decide, Corbin, actually, who is right and who is wrong. Time is coming, just uh, nearby, I think 78 days to left. Apna Amader Shonge Thakin, who will come back after a very short break. <laughs> उटेंट was straightening and people of Ilford North. Was if I start from you, uh, obviously you, you, you brought up in, in you born in Tower Hamlets so far I, I heard. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you born in Tower Hamlets, you moved down there, you are a single parents and what qualities or what 
thing you have, you can offer to your constituency. I and think, yeah. you can change current MPs at least court there. I think what I've got on my side is that um, you're on Redbridge for over 15, well, almost 15 years now. Um, I think one of the things that's wrong with politics at the moment is that there are so many people in Westminster who have completely lost touch, or maybe never were in touch in the first place, who've made a load of promises they can't keep. And I think people, whether it's the expenses scandal or broken promises, I think people just feel completely alienated and frustrated with Westminster politics. And I've got a good track record locally, both as a local councillor and as deputy leader of the council, of making a real tangible difference. Most importantly, I don't make promises I can't keep. And there have been times in the last few months where I've upset voters because they want me to do something on the council or not cut a certain service. And I've just said, look, I've got to be honest with you. I'd rather upset you before an election than break your trust after an election. And I think it's that approach and going door to door, street by street. And I've been knocking on doors solidly for, for almost two years now, honest trying to earn, earn people's trust. Yeah. So and I, I think there aren't, in, there aren't many MPs who live in the area that they want to represent and who come from working class families. And I think, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think lots of people will, will not just vote for Labour this time in Ilford North, but will support me personally. Yeah, as you know, it's a, it's a red base. Obviously, it was run by Conservative pretty long time. Mm. And I think there were sometimes majority, sometimes not. Yeah, Labour was right. there. Right now, you've got... 35? Uh, yeah, we, we won a majority in Redbridge for the right first now. time in the borough's history. So what changes you have done? So what, what have you done for yeah. the people that you personal or as, as a deputy leader that will think, well, yes, Wes will, will deliver and we can trust him, yeah, well, he's an honest man? Or the, the trust issue is really important, so we picked our pledges really carefully and I'm really proud to say that every single one of the pledges the Labour Party made at the last election has either been delivered or is, or is in the process of being delivered. And for my, my record personally, one of the things that I've said to people in Ilford North is, look, I'm standing on, on my record locally, whether it's investing in new leisure facilities and our parks and open spaces, getting new toilets put in on Barkingside High Street, which you know won't be of huge interest to your global audience, but for people who live in and around Barkingside, it's sometimes, you know, it's the small things in politics yeah, that really make a difference. It is a matter of we've too. frozen people's council tax to put money back in their pockets. So there are things that we've done that I think are making a real difference. You know, doubling the street sweeping, introducing free bulky waste collection. I think one of the things I've been saying to people on the doorstep is, you know, sometimes people say, oh, it's only a little thing. It's people are dumping rubbish at the end of the high street. But if you live in that area, sometimes the little things are the biggest things. So yes, of course, I'm talking about our vision for the economy and for the NHS, but I'm also well, showing that yeah, I understand I'm, the little I'm things I'm as well. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, that's okay, fine. You, you said quite a lot for your uh, local thing. I've got a caller. I'll come back yeah, to sure. you. Yeah, sure. Salaam caller. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Hi. It's, it's a very wonderful program. Thank you. Hello. What's your name, brother? Uh, okay, shall I quote, uh, shall I say my name? Please. Uh, it's Roman. Roman, okay. All right. Okay. How are you, Roman? I have, a, I have a question for West Treating and Yeshiv Ahmed. Well, what I can understand, West Treating, he was the president of Anywhere mm -hmm. uh, a long time back, and Yeshi, he was the president of uh, London Metropolitan University Student Senior as well. So now my question is, obviously, uh, it is about immigration and it's related to students, as you can understand. So uh, with uh, West Reading and Yeshiv, uh, Yeshiv is uh, representing a conservative at the moment and with uh, obviously Labour. So Labour candidate, so yes. What is your plan or what is your view about international students? Like you can, you can see a rampant closure of the uh, sponsors, uh, TFO sponsor license of the, the different colleges and uh, this is how students are being victimized. Mm -hmm. And the uh, government actually invites foreign students to come and study in the UK and then they revoke college license. But when they revoke college license, they say, of uh, the colleges, those are vulgar, or students are vulgar. But my point is, when a student is invited in the UK, and uh, when the license is given to a college, then obviously home office, they check everything, and then they actually invite directly or indirectly those international students, and they come here. But after that, uh, the government, they tag, they tag those colleges and the students as vulgar. But don't you think there is actually a problem with the system instead of calling those students over? Because uh, home office, they give license. That's why students can come to those colleges and they study. And then they 
that the office says, no, those students are bogus. So in the first place, there is a problem with the system, and that should be rectified instead of victimizing those students. So okay. in regards to this, what is your plan in terms of students uh, you, uh, students MP. and yeah. this victimization and rampant closure of their college license? Yeah, Roman, and, before, before leaving yeah. you, can I ask you one thing? I think he, you know, um, was uh, earlier, he was, he's, I think he's, he was as well a uh, London Met uh, vice student, president, vice yeah. president. Do you, do you have any idea about Wes? What is your opinion about him? <laughs> Uh, Why do you think people will support him for uh, uh, Ilford North? Obviously, I'm not from Ilford. Obviously, if I was Ilford, and uh, do obviously, I, uh, I know with uh, definitely. And if All I right, that's Ilford, fine. Then that's fine. I think, um, yeah, I think he, he was, I think he was in 2008-9, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. 8-9 time. to 10, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you very much, Roman. Um, I will ask this uh, the yeah. question to uh, uh, Wes. Uh, again, as you were a student leader, yeah. really expecting it's, it's a real, do you know, the, the most so, unfair thing, and I remember with the London Metropolitan case, it wasn't this fault of students that the university hadn't been doing the right processes and procedures, and yet all of these students were suddenly penalised and punished for something that wasn't their fault, and they'd paid thousands and thousands of indeed. pounds to that come over. Thing, and yeah. I don't think the government was understanding enough or sympathetic enough to those students. So I think we need to get the, the basics right, so, you know, making sure that colleges and universities are following the right checks. I think we need to be a bit more realistic about what universities and colleges should be asked to do. Because I think part of the problem is the Home Office has started to use universities and colleges almost as part of their Home Office So do you team think the government, does, the government did the good thing with because they shut down hundreds of hundreds of colleges? Well, I think where you've got dodgy colleges above a chip shop that are, are, mm. are providing, well, charging a lot to foreign students and not actually delivering, then that's not good. And I, and right. I would support, clamp down, I would absolutely support clamp down on bogus colleges. As a, as a student leader, well, he's a good supporter of you, a good friend of you as well. As another, another gentleman, he is a student leader as well. He's still, I think, he's in, in a city university with the student uh, movement involved. If you become MP, what will you do for the people, of, for the students who are really victims? Well, yeah, I think, I think one of the things I'd push for is tougher protections for people that are in that position. So um, if they find that the, the rug's pulled out from under their feet because the license has been revoked, I think we've got a duty to make sure that they can either complete their courses at that institution or that they have an opportunity to study at another institution. But I think it's, this, it's the safeguards that are completely missing, and that's not fair on the students. Okay. Um, you know, we forget, well, you know, Yashir doesn't forget us. They pay tens of thousands of pounds <laughs> yeah, to that's, 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 and that's I think uh, we treat them really badly when we behave yeah. like this. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot for your opinion. Um, yes, uh, Yashir, I'll come to you. You work with him. Yeah. The gentleman, he was with NUS. He, yep. he, he, he was campaigning for some issues and all of these things. Yep. Maybe you agree or disagree, I don't know. You were very good comrades of him. Yep. And uh, he going to Labour Party and he going to Conservative Party, left to right. Friend, so friend. What, what, what do you think about uh, his credibility for the people of, uh, what is your message for the people of Ilford North? I think that is is 100% right candidate for the, uh, the Ilford North. Why do you think he's 100%? Because um, I know him, it's been like eight years now. Because he's a good we, friend, this is how you are at No, no, we yeah. work together. Look, when, when I was elected as a president, London Metropolitan University was in trouble. And we were, <coughs> we were actually isolated by the management. And it was Wes who came and stood by us. We were calling him all the time, even, even, you know, even at night, to find Wes can you come tomorrow morning to help us, and he will be there in the morning. And Wes even typed my email. I mean, <laughs> he corrected my emails. I think he's down to earth. He understands people from all walks of life. And Wes Streeting is always there when people need him. And he's a very good advocate. He's an outspoken person. He's very knowledgeable. He, 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 he's, he's a very good person. All right, that's and fine. I, I, I support Wes But Street. that's fine. And uh, that's a problem sometimes politicians, when they start, they, become, they are very honest, knowledge, uh, knowledgeable. Uh, once they go into the ladder, they change their letter. Things hasn't changed with Wes. All right, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> that will, uh, Wes will uh, consider. Yes, Tarek, I will come back to you. Okay. You are local constituents. You live there. I live in Red Bridge. What I'm are you uh, expecting from uh, Wes? And um, what, one thing I can say... And uh, what is the different thing, different actually between him and, and uh, Lee Scott? He is a successful MP. He is. He got, uh, I think, uh, five, six, six thousand, uh, oh, no, five and a half thousand yeah. majority. Yeah. And he's the most popular as well there. So the thing is that uh, there's a different there's a difference between because 
OS is uh, from Labour Party and political and, and politically you support Labour Party? This is uh, yes, I support Labour Party, but I would say so technically that, uh, you accepted end of that program. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing <laughs> is that two different parties, okay. so there is a difference. And the other thing is that he locally he's a lo uh, local when the Labour Party was opposition, he was a deputy leader. Now he's also deputy leader, so he's serving the local area. Another thing is he's a knowledgeable person and, and he is a young man, so he is a energy yes, to time and yes, and he even after the his declaration as a PPC, he is mm. doing lots of work and also he is going door to door asking people problems. And I believe if he goes to the um, parliament, definitely can do better. That's than fine, Tarek. Why I will come back to you, Yashi, as well. Yeah. I want to ask you, gentlemen. One. I'm sure you know your former uh, chairman, Mr. Uh, Sanjeev uh, uh, Bhattacharya. Yeah, that's you right. Know? You know him very well. I do. But he said he could no longer defend Mr. Ed Miliband and Mr. Ed Balls. How ordinary folks will trust you, your leader, and support you. You are the soldier of Mr. Ed Miliband. He <laughs> is your chairman. He couldn't yeah. trust. How ordinary people will trust you? Well, people can have different views, and I know San Sanjib chose to leave the Labour Party, and he was voted out as our chair the year before. And, um, but he know, was very hard on a very long time. He was involved. I have no party. personal animosity uh, against him. I think I do think it's always peculiar when people go from Labour to Conservative, because I think the values are a world apart. But he's made his choice, and wish him well for the future. I think. With Ed Miliband, obviously he, he's taking a battering in the press at the moment for, um, for, for various stances that he's got on things like tax avoidance. I think the some of the parts of the media are out to get him because he had the courage to stand up against the newspapers and the phone hacking, the Murdochs. And I know Ed Miliband and I think he's a man with a good heart and a good set of values who has the potential to be a really great reforming Prime Minister and there is a reason why lots of people are gunning for Ed Miliband at the moment and I think they are worried that if he is the elected Prime Minister he will really shake things up and change things and I think there are lots of powerful vested interests who are worried about Ed Miliband being Prime Minister. I'm not worried about Ed Miliband being Prime Minister. I think he will be a great reforming sure leader. That's absolutely right. You are not worried, but uh, people may think about it. As I said, your chairman, the ex-chairman, he was worried about I know, Anyway, that will not ever heard that, Sanjeev say anything bad about Ed Miliband. Yeah, that, that's when he was exactly a member of the Labour Party. Exactly what I, think, I, said. I think I think that, that's why there are lots of people who jump ship and then say no, they really hated that, him that, before. Well, but they will, uh, that's he never people, expressed those views inside the Labour Party. Well, I never met him. I don't know. That's his, yeah. his public domain. I found it. I just asked the question. Yeah, sure. One thing, you born in Tower Hamlets, isn't it? Yes, you? that's right. You brought up here. Yes. You moved down to Red Beach. Yeah. Why people, why do you think lots of, especially I know in the Tower Hamlets, 33, 34% Bengali people, lots of people are moving down to Red Beach. Yeah. Do you think it's, 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 it's this Red Beach borough was run by Tories and they're good, better than uh, Tower Hamlets? No, I think people, it's part of the long history of the East End. We've always had, the East End has been a really interesting part of London. You've always had new communities moved in and gradually mm -hmm. move outwards, whether it's the Huguenots, the Jews, now the Bengali community. And it, it, it just, it's just been part of our historic pattern. But I think Redbridge has got a lot going for it. We've got really great schools, um, good local environment. And, <laughs> and that's why people are telling me they, they moved yeah, there when I'm that's up on good. the door. So you know, Redbridge, you've got a good school. Facility. Absolutely, yeah. So, why do you think it's good school there? Is it is is, is Labour run borough or Conservative run borough or who is running this borough pretty long time? I think I think it's the teachers. To be fair, I think, teachers. I think, <laughs> I think teachers are giving good really, really good school leaders. Right. Got outstanding teachers. But again, and they're you doing need, a fantastic you need, well, job. as you know, when you have a ship, someone needs to have captain. Without captain. Sheep will run here and there. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's fine. That people will judge again. Uh, that's people will judge uh, who is doing what. And uh, a very interesting borough. How many MPs you got in your uh, Red Bridge borough? Four? Oh, there are four MPs in total. Yeah, two Conservative, two Labour. Yeah, that's right. And especially you one, mm. just really moving marginal. here and there, Absolutely, here and there. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think you can make it this time? I think so, based on based on what people are telling me. Look, you never take anything for granted and run up to an election. And everything I'm picking up on the doorstep tells me this is going to be a very close election. But I think we've got a very good chance of winning in Ilford North, partly because I think the Labour Party nationally is doing better than we did last time. It's our second worst defeat in history. But also, you know, things like Lee Scott's broken promise on tuition fees, for example. As you mentioned, I was president of NUS at the last election. He signed the pledge with me. When it came to the vote, he wasn't there. We've lost maternity at King George Hospital. David Cameron promised to protect those services. He hasn't. So I think people feel rightly let down by the Conservatives and a Conservative MP who just isn't standing up for them.
Oh, well, oh, well, right now I can say obviously Lee Scott is not there, no one is uh, on behalf of him, so it's your opinion. Again, well, he's people, got defend his record again, on the Again, step, people yeah. will judge uh, uh, what is uh, uh, his job and uh, what is your record. Mm. What are the main issues, if you can give me three issues in, in your constituency, especially, mm. forget about the whole borough, what is the major three issues you want to tackle if you become MP? The NHS is a big one. As I mentioned, we've lost maternity at, at King George Hospital and A&E is threatened with closure and we've got waiting times that are out of control. GPs tell me that primary care is in crisis as well. So the NHS... Again, is NHS is, is, is a very a really big, big national issue. Yeah, yeah. And I think we really, but we really see it locally. <coughs> it's a really good yeah. local, what local examples was, of where the NHS is. As an MP, yeah. what is the major three thing that locally, directly help to the people? Yeah, well, the, I mean, the NHS is a, is a real local one. Okay, so so you'll be the stick with uh, stick with because it, because of King George Hospital and our yeah. fight to save those services. Um, GP waiting times are a big issue as well. So I think that although it is a national issue, locally I think we've hit, been hit particularly hard. Our local NHS trust is, is still in special measures, for example. So that's a, that's a big one. The second issue is burglary. It's a big issue right across Ilford North. The thin blue line, the police force is thinner under the Conservatives. We've, we've lost police officers and safer neighbourhood teams and, and police stations. Safer neighbourhood teams have been cut back. Um, Labour's um, pledged to introduce more frontline police officers and I'll be fighting to make sure that we get our fair share of those and that they're focused on tackling burglary, motor vehicle crime and antisocial behaviour. They're, they're really big issues. And then the other one is, is, is opportunities for young people. As I said, we've got some brilliant schools in, in Redbridge. We don't have enough school places. So I brought Labour's Shadow Education Secretary, Tristram Hunt, to Ilford North. He's pledged that we will get more, Ilford, um, more school place in Ilford North, so I'll be you know, making sure he, he sticks to that. But also, I've got a lot of my own background in terms of working in education around careers, and I think we've lost too much in terms of careers advice in school. So I've, putting aside to what government nationally does, I've said locally, I'll offer work experience opportunities in my, in my office, paid internships, okay. and an Ilford North. That's fine, uh, that's well, fine. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I want to come down to Tarek Bay again, as your local uh, uh, constituents there. What are the problems? What are the issues, sir? Uh, that's, main, that's, that's, that's... Only one issue I raised, but, but they're doing now, the swimming pool issue is whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, a new, new, brand new swimming pool. So you are um, really champagne <laughs> socially? You no, want a nice uh, swimming uh, pool, <laughs> people cannot eat even. No, 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 there is a, there all, you, you need to, um, you need to think about your health and well-being. So, so health and well-being is swimming yes, pool, that's good. Yes, so, and uh, Labour Party, after coming, they said they are trying to, uh, where can I clarify, there is a swimming pool in the offer, maybe the place yeah. has been designated and the budget has been allocated. This is the main issue. And uh, what I, the other issues that they dealt with, uh, burglary, so they are de dealing with this one. Apart from this one, uh, no other issues. But I was uh, locally, many people worried, about, it's not Ilford, but Muslim communities about, very last thing locally, great concern about terrorism bill. So many people are scared about that what's going on nationally, even uh, even though this is the local issue, but the resident of um, uh, Red Breeze and other areas How many voters do you think from Bengali community in, in Ilford? I have no idea, but I, we have uh, around two, as a, how uh, many, uh, around four, a, uh, four uh, Bengali councillors in Red Breeze, Khair and uh, one lady and Aziz, uh, three, uh, I think, part uh, from? Um, one is Shadow Hit. Yeah, highly from, from, okay. from I think, yeah, so I around, I think it's 10 percent. Yeah, it's so yeah. what I can say that 5.7 percent uh, resident is in from a uh, Bengali background, and, and that is daily increasing. Yeah, obviously, as you said, it's quite lots of people moving from Tower Hamlets and. That's yeah, it's really because I'm knocking on doors and meeting mm. people who lived yeah, in Tower right. Hamlets, and so we've yeah. got a lot, in, lot in common. So I say, where do you live in Tower Hamlets? And I'll, I'll could go down to street level because I, I know I still know Tower. Which Hamlets. Which is where you are living so, 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 so I live in Stepney, so I live just uh, off Stepney so, Way. So that's Street. that's okay. good. That means you are offering better than Tower Hamlets in your area. People are inviting. You are inviting people from Tower Hamlets. Uh, well, I think choosing <laughs> to come to Redbridge for the right reasons. <laughs> okay, I hope okay. they'll lend me their vote in May. All right. Uh, do you still dislike George Bush and you like Hillary Clinton? I loathe George Bush and I'm a fan of Hillary Clinton. I think, I think if she'd got the Democratic nomination last time, okay. she would have been a better president and Obama would have been a better president this time, but maybe it'll be the other way around, who knows. Okay, so you still you are, you stick yeah. with your earlier decision. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Tarek Bhai, to come okay. here. It was a fantastic uh, conversation. I believe have, I think it's your uh, uh, local people, they will uh, uh, have a good idea about uh, your policies and this. And thank, thank you, Yashir, as well, for your contribution. <coughs> Wells, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You are very much welcome very to much. here. And obviously, Doshak, it's your time. After I decide, Corbin, who is right, who is wrong? Politics, obviously. Election coming, everybody will come down to you. You will see lots of new face, lots of old face. So by your time, you will decide who is right for you and who will work for you. That's the time in 7th of May. So that's the decision time. Stay with us. Next week, yes, uh, uh, Ahmed Bai will be with us and another MP. He is, she is coming here. So, Asha Kuri Abdara, enjoy the next program. I'm going to Thank you.